Good morning, Easton. How are you all doing this morning? It's a holiday weekend and it's just so good to be with you today. My name is Joanna Cummings. I'm a pastor with children and their families. And we welcome you, um, whether you've been with us hundreds of times or if this is your first Sunday with us. We're so glad you're here. If you're gathering with us online, we're so glad you are here. Take some time to take a look at who we are and who we have committed ourselves to be as we look at our community of faith statement, who we are. Um, this is the the type of people we are invited to be as we live in faithful community with one another. We want to let you know that the church office is going to be closed tomorrow on Monday for the Labor Day holiday. So if you need any of your staff, come find us on Tuesday. Next weekend is our church-wide retreat. And many of us will be up on the mountain enjoying our time uh, in community and uh, gathering with both God and one, one another. We will continue with our worship here at Warner as normal, um, but there will be no Sunday school. Our Creative Connections group will be held September 10th at 4.30 at the Church Parsonage. That's at 1212 Holly Street. Anyone is welcome to attend. If, you, um, if you're just looking for a little connection uh, around some creative elements, that will be a great space for you. Our Bible and book studies begin this week. If you have not signed up for those just yet, you still have time to do that. Uh, make sure to be looking at our website and our church-wide emails to find more information about those studies or see Pastor Brandon and Pastor Carey. And finally, during our opening hymn, Jesus Loves Me, children are invited to come and participate in a different type of worship service today. Uh, we are going to be having a um, it for Children's Church today, they will come and um, sit up front and station for them and invite them to come up during that time. What a joy it is to be a community of faith that loves and celebrates people of all ages and stages and sees God in all of us. And with that, may we begin this time of worship and open our hearts towards God's Spirit speaking in and through us. Let the children come. Don't dare drive them away. And then the kingdom comes. Hear the holy, foolish things they say. The springtime of their life decides the adults they'll become. So let the children come. Please, let the children come. And as our children come up to the front during this hymn, let us sing, Jesus Loves Me, as printed in our insert. Jesus. 
Jesus loves me, this I know. together but in the spirit of this Sunday with our bodies as much as you're comfortable um, we're just gonna pray using our bodies you can touch you don't have to touch it's whatever everyone's eyes will be closed whatever you feel so loud but let us pray together God we thank you for bringing us together we thank you for children we thank you for the show our the show, all those thoughts, those things we're worried about, those thoughts we need to slow down so that we might experience your presence. We pray for peace in all the things that we are facing. We pray that we are concerned about who need your healing, who hurts as followers of you, bring kindness, bring comfort, and tell the good news that everyone we meet is a beloved child of God. Lord, we lift up our hearts to you. Search our hearts that we may continue to grow in love and compassion. We pray for those whom we love, for those who are facing grief or loss or loneliness. We pray with our hands. Show us what we can do with the touch of our hands to bring your kingdom a little as individuals and as this body of Christ. It's in your name that we pray, amen.
Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 13 through 15. Some people brought their children to Jesus so that he would place his hands on them and pray. But the disciples scolded them. Allow the kingdom of heaven belongs to people like these children. Then he blessed the children and went away from there. The word of God for the people of God. Microphone, my other microphone. Loving our littlest neighbors and what it is to welcome those in our midst that sometimes go unnoticed. And we're going to talk a little bit about why it is that Jesus wanted us to welcome the children among us and kids that are gathered up front here. I'm going to need your help in a little bit. Do you all think you can help me in a little bit? Yeah, yeah? you're going to help me with my sermon today? Yeah, okay. Because you know what? I don't know everything about God. I certainly don't. And in fact, I bet there are things that you know that I don't know. And I'm going to need your help today with that. Can you do that? Good. Okay. Let us, before we do that though, can we all pray together? And let's do a prayer where we repeat after one another. So will you repeat after me? Okay. To welcome your spirit. To welcome your spirit. Open our hearts. Open our hearts. And our minds. And let us hear what you would say to us. What you would say to us. Amen. 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 So, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? <laughs> Jesus was trying to teach some of his followers and talk to his followers. And some children wanted to come forward. And in fact, their parents wanted the children to come forward because they said, Jesus, Jesus, we want you to pray for our children as well. And they wanted Jesus to lay his hands on the children to pray. And do you know what happened? Did you hear what happened? A bunch of the followers of Jesus actually said, get those children out of here. Get them out of here. Why do you think they wanted to get the children out of there? Why do you think they wanted the children? Because he's busy. Good answer. Yeah. Maybe Jesus is really busy. And he was like, I, the followers were like, I don't know if Jesus has time to deal with all of these kids. What do you think? Oh, maybe they just don't. That might have something to do with it, too. You know what? Sometimes as adults, we, even though we care a lot about children, and I think we care about young people because we know young people are people too, and we know you're going to grow up to be adults too. Sometimes we get worried about thinking about things in big adult ways, and I think you're right. Sometimes we may forget that children's voices are important too. Did somebody have their hand up over here? Yeah, what do you think? They just didn't like little people? Maybe so. And you know what? In that day and age, you're kind of right. Children weren't really considered people much at all. Um, they didn't really think about them being important in quite that way. Now, that doesn't mean they didn't care about their children, but in terms of when Jesus is trying to do his big important teaching, they really might not have thought, yeah, this is, this is important too. Let me get one more. Yeah. Maybe because they wanted to be touched. So maybe the people were like, Jesus, Jesus doesn't have time and doesn't, can't pay attention to all of these people too. If he's got to worry about us adults, why does he need to worry about them? Oh, I see one more earnest hand. I got to get one more. What do you think? 
Oh, good. I was hoping somebody would say that. Maybe because they thought children were annoying. <laughs> yes. Yes. Maybe because they thought children were annoying. Or that children, children make too much what? Noise. noise, right? Yes. Yes. It's a bit different when we have children making a lot of noise around. And you know what? It is good sometimes for adults to have their own time away and for children not to always, for, for adults not to always have the noise of children around, but it is good for us to be reminded of the beautiful noise that children can make. Because, you know, I think Jesus, above everything else, was trying to remind his followers that children and young people, and I would include youth in this as well, I see a few youth in here, I see CJ back there, I see my daughter Miriam over there. I see a few more. Um, I think people that are young have a different way of looking at the world. And sometimes they are more attuned to certain aspects of what it is to experience not only the world, but also God in very direct and real ways. And I have always found that in my work of ministry, that when I have spent time with the young amongst me and around me and amongst us, that I have learned something profound about God each and every time. In fact, sometimes I miss being a youth director. For a while I spent a lot of time as a youth director before I went into ordained ministry. And being a youth director, I always said it kind of kept me feeling young because it kept my eyes and heart open to new ways of thinking and being and also of hearing the voice of God and remembering what it was like, remembering what it was like to be able to trust that God was there and God was opening new possibilities in the world. So what I've asked them to do today, and I don't know if everybody has done it, but has some, have some people made, let me see what it says here, so I know exactly what Pastor Joanna asked them to put, what does God look like? Have you all been making things that say, what does God look like? Has anybody done that? Has anybody done that? Okay, good. Well, whatever you've made, will you bring your Play-Doh creation and put it right up here on the table? Will you do that? So whatever you've made, can you put it up here? And if you're still working on something, you can keep some Play-Doh too. But can you bring, if you've made something, can you put it up here? Is there anybody else that's got one? You can keep working on it. Okay, good. Keep working on it. Good. As you finish it, I want you to put it up there, and we're going to have that up there as a part of our worship table. But I want to ask you a question. What do you think God looks like? Can somebody tell me what they think God looks like? Yeah, come here. Come tell me. What's that? Oh, you made Jesus. Okay, so this is Jesus. Did everyone want to see Jesus? Oh, Jesus. Beautiful. So somebody was going to tell me what God looks like. Okay. Can you tell me about it? What does God look like? Why did you make God this way? Why? What? A skinny one. A skinny one. Skinny man. All right. All right. Who else can tell me what God looks like? Oh, yes. Elizabeth. What does God look like? Come here. Bring it to me. Let me see it. What does God look like? And why did you draw this? Because that's what he looks like. Beautiful. Can somebody else tell me? Yes. Which one? Show me. And why did you make that one? Oh, that's a good answer. That answer was, you know what? I don't really know what God looks like. I think there are a lot of people in this room that would say, I don't really know what God looks like. Now, I can tell you this, children and adults, that one of the ways that we as Christians say God looked like is that Jesus showed us what God looks like. That the ways that Jesus acted and lived, including welcoming the little children, is something about the way that God looked like. So what are some things when you think of God, when you think of God, yes, Knox. Yeah. 
ooh, he made this because it looks like the church. Oh. Can you tell me why this looks like the church, Knox? Okay, because this is the platform and these are the windows. It's beautiful. You know what, Knox? Sometimes the ways that people make their churches and their church buildings are to tell us something about what we think about the greatness of God. And one of the neat things about this church right now, well, some people might not think it's so neat, we don't have a building. So what does our church look like right now? What does our church look like right now? Us. We are the church right now, right? That is our church. So thank you for reminding us of that, Knox. Yes. That's beautiful. Yes, we have a colored picture of Jesus. That's what, God looks like. That's what God looks like. Yes. Can you all tell me why you love God? What? Because God is nice. Why else? Because God likes little people, likes big people, and likes who? Everybody. That's beautiful. I love it. What's that? Ooh, beautiful. Can you tell me about it? It's God made the babies. Mm, see? Beautiful. Little beautiful baby blue there. A couple more. Yeah. Okay, because God made everybody and everything, and this is an animal. One more. One more. Tell me why you love God. Yes. Oh, because God made you your age. Yes, because God made you your special age. And someday you'll be a different age too, right? And you were a different age before. And that's something we all get to remember as followers of God. God. Yes. Oh, another church. Maybe we need to put them on the building committee. What do you think? <laughs> Thank you all for sharing. Okay, I'm going to talk just a little more, okay? So today may seem a little chaotic. It may seem a little strange may not be the way that I would normally preach or teach, especially in front of you all, but I think it's important for us to remember to listen to the voices of the children. Because children are not just the future of our church, but if we are the church body, then they are a lot that we are concerned about for our children. I know a lot of us have been advocating for the safety of our children on Capitol Hill as of late. I know that we have worried about um, the ways that maybe sometimes we are not paying attention to the voices of unique children, diverse children, children in all of the ways that they are created to be. And one of the things that I give thanks for in this particular community of faith is the ways that we do cherish our children. Pastor Joanna and a lot of our helpers that are down here today often go back to the library and that's where the kids go and they do things like this and they explore what it means to love God, to remember that God is there and to put their faith and hope and trust in God. And I think that's what Jesus wants us to do each and every day. Jesus wants us to remember to have the faith of a child. And as I wrote in my meditation this week uh, that went out by email or my pastor's note, I don't think to have the faith of a child means to be simple or means to be somebody that is controlled or somebody that has no power. Rather, to have the faith of a child is to be somebody that wonders, that has the open wonder that children have with play. And that is, the, that is the relationship we can have to all of creation and to this world in which we live. 
So kids, can you help us learn how to play? Can you help us learn how to play more? No? Well, you know what? If you don't want to, you don't have to. I'm not going to make you. Yes, good, good. Well, what I, want you to, what I want you all to do now is I want you to bring all of your Play-Doh creations and put them up here on the table, okay? And then, well, finish up real quick because you're going to put those up here and then you're going to head back to sit with your family now because in a few minutes we are going to all gather together from ages 1 to 101 and we're going to come up here together and we are going to have communion. And that's going to be the way that we celebrate God's presence among us that welcomes all of us together as one. So can you bring your creations up here? While they are doing that, once we have that space a little cleared, we'll welcome up our ushers. Nothing like a little chaos on a Sunday morning. It's beautiful. We remember that God created out of chaos and brought order from chaos. And it, this is beautiful chaos this morning. So let us go to the God of wonder as we offer our gifts to the work of God in the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.
As we prepare our hearts to receive Holy Communion, we begin with a time of confession, a time to bear our hearts to God. So let us pray this prayer of confession together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our beloved child of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. And now, as forgiven and reconciled people, I invite you to exchange signs of peace and love with those around you. The peace of Christ be with you. And also for you.
are you. And blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed Him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of His suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At His ascension, you exalted Him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which He gave Himself up for us, He took bread, He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to His disciples, and said, Over He took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to His disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church. that we are all children of God. Let us sing together or pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our God in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the United Methodist Church, we have an open who you are, where you come from, what your background is. If you care to experience the love and grace of Jesus Christ, you are welcome to partake in this place. Also, all of our elements are glued. The way we will do communion in this, this morning is we will have two stations up front and you will receive a piece of bread in your hand, and then you will also receive a small cup of juice. The choir will be served first, and then everybody can come to receive down the middle aisle and receive, and then head back to their seats down the outside aisles. If you need to be served in your seats this morning, uh, Pastor Carrie and her daughter Helen will be bringing the elements around, and they will also go and serve the nursery and uh, Derek as well. The table is set, and every one of us gathered here, and for the whole world. And this is the cup of salvation poured out for you and for all of us, for the forgiveness of sins, and for the ongoing salvation of the world. I invite our service to come forward now.
And now if you would pray with me. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now if you would rise in body or spirit and join us in our closing hymn, Wash, O God, All of Our Children. Joe, if we can incorporate squeaky toys into our future, I think that would be great. It is so good to have everybody here today, even on this holiday weekend. Go and remember to pay attention to our littlest neighbors as well, for they have something to teach us, and sometimes they need things from us as well. So let the children come whenever they are around and wherever they are. Hey kids, are y'all still out there? Yeah. All right. I'm going to I'm going to say Jesus loves you and I want you to say Jesus loves you back as loudly as you can, okay? You ready? Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Go in peace. Amen.